All right, um, first, just for record purposes, yeah. just say and spell your first and last okay. name for us. Uh, Malia, M-A-L-I-A, Duarte, D-U-A-R-T-E. And you live in Knoxville, correct? Yes. All right, so first of all, um, I know this is difficult, mm-hmm. but tell me a little bit about, you know, um, what happened um, yeah. on Friday. So Friday morning, uh, Austin and I were at Fox Toyota in Clinton, Tennessee, and we purchased our first vehicle together. Uh, of course, it was his vehicle, but we were sharing the title. And uh, he was so excited about it. It was his dream truck, a 2024 Toyota Tacoma off-road, all of the fanciness. It had like the hugest screen we've ever seen inside. It was like a TV in there. and. Um, we were able to get it out of the parking lot and take it home with us. So he really was excited to drive it down Friday night. We had plans to drive down Friday night for my dad's 50th birthday at our friend's um, marina in Crockwell, Alabama. And we were about 55 minutes out. Uh, My brother was following us, he's 18. So my dad wanted to make sure we were driving together um, just for safety purposes. It's probably the longest drive my brother has had to make. And uh, it was around 7.30 when we were driving uh, southbound towards Cropwell. And it was really dark. And all I saw was the tire right in front of the windshield before it like made impact. And I just was holding our dog and I just held him tighter and just braced for that impact. And once it hit, I immediately turned over to Austin to see if he was conscious, if I could see him. And I couldn't even see his like face or anything because the roof had fully caved in on his face. And I felt us hit the grass and go through the median. We had it on cruise control. So I really do think that saved us to not get on the other side of the highway because it was helping correct and straighten the car. Um, But it did take us a long travel time because we were at like 70 cruise control. And I was afraid that at that moment, if I put it in park when we were going that fast, I didn't know if I could with not having the brake. So luckily, like it fell very quickly, but we hit a stump and I immediately put the car in park and I grabbed my phone off of the floorboard and dialed 911, but I didn't know I was in such a shock and I didn't know where we were. And I looked to my right towards the highway we came from and I believed that there was an angel that helped us that night. He stopped and he got across the road before uh, 911, like as soon as 911 answered and I was able to hand the phone to him. And I told him like, I'm okay, like, please go help him. And then he was starting to move and trying to get himself out of the vehicle. And he was not responding and listening to me telling him to calm down and stay still and help was on the way. And the paramedics ended up getting there within 10 minutes of me calling 911, which I'm so grateful for. But Austin ended up unbuckling himself getting himself out of the vehicle and walking to the ambulance with the paramedics. Um, We were taken to Riverview ER on Friday night. Uh, I was checked out and discharged and Austin was life lighted here to UAB. Um, And my brother got our dog and took him. I know that you guys so much right now and you know our thoughts and prayers are with you know you and your entire family through this how is Austin doing today I haven't seen him this morning yet we're going to be going to see him right after this but yesterday was a really good day there was a lot of steps forward and there was a few steps backwards but he was able to open his eyes on his own and he responded that he couldn't see and um, swelling has gone down, which we were prepared that yesterday would be one of the biggest swell. Like they were warning us that his face would be really swollen. So I do think that that's by the grace of God. And from neck down, he is, he is okay. It's just all his head. 
So we're just taking it day by day. Um, he does have a traumatic brain injury and we don't know what that looks like until we're able to wake him up and take him off everything. And um, I know there's been a lot of, you know, support given to you guys and your family right now. Um, there was a GoFundMe set up. What does it mean to you to just have so many people, you know, rallying around you guys during such a difficult time? It means so, so much. Um, I don't want to speak so highly of myself. I don't think of myself so highly, but Austin is such a kind person. Any person that he meets and interacts with, he makes you feel like you're the most important person in the world. And if there's somebody on the side of the street that needs money and he has cash, like he's going to stop and take the time to do that. So the fact that we have so many people that we met along our journey and people we don't even know that have reached out and donated to the GoFundMe and sent prayers our way. I, like, I really feel the faith and I'm just so grateful. And, you know, this tragedy, I mean, caused by no fault of, you know, you or your fiance, Austin. What's your message to anybody out there that's watching us? My message is that I just hope that if we can save one person's life by people taking the extra time and money to have right installers with their vehicles, with their tires, spend the money on those better tires and make sure they're checking all their equipment before they're hitting the road, then it's worth it. Nobody should have to deal with this. And my dad owning a tire company and working with tires his entire life, that's one of our biggest fears. And I think it's an opportunity for even tire companies to just re-educate their installers and make sure that this doesn't happen. And you mentioned you have been with Austin for seven years now? Yes. And you guys just got engaged a few months ago? Yes. Um, you know, just speaking about this entire experience and, you know, um, everything that you've been going through, I know that, you know, whoever whose tire this was, mm -hmm. it's probably unknown. Um, yeah. I think we'd all like to see them do the right thing and, you know, it's not yeah. going to come forward. Yeah, I agree. Um, I don't expect them to come forward. I understand it's scary. It wasn't purposeful. I just think it's negligence in the sense that maybe even if they see it and they don't come forward, that they can do better. Or if they went somewhere and just got new tires installed, don't go there and make sure that that place is being told like that they need to be educating their installers. And when that happened, all that tire, you know, come up. What was running through your mind in that moment? I thought that we were both going to be dead. I thought that our life was over. I thought that our dog was not going to be okay. I didn't think that I would have an opportunity to call 911 or park the car or anything. And I just, once it hit and happened, while I was still trying to stop the vehicle, I was just immediately just saying, God, God, please, like, I, I don't know what I would do without him. And I just can't even think about that. Is there anything I didn't ask you that you would have or say? Um, I don't think so. Thank you so much. Thank you.